Are you ready to learn about the concept of optimization, limits, and derivatives in less than 5 minutes? Um, uh, I guess... Exactly! So sit back, relax, and let me sum it up for you. Imagine a dog. Imagine we're playing fetch with this dog on the beach. We throw the ball in the water for the dog to fetch, and as soon as this happens, the dog goes like... Which path would the dog need to take to get to the ball faster? Does he go through the ocean where the water might slow him down? Does he run through the sand and then swim in the water? Or does he run to a certain spot in the sand and then swim the rest of the way? If the dog can run 7 times faster than he can swim, which of these paths will take him to the ball in the fastest amount of time? Remember that the dog moves faster on the ground. The graph of the dog would look something like this. The bottom numbers are the meters the dog runs on the sand, and the left numbers are the seconds it takes to get to the ball. If he runs a really short distance or a really long distance on the sand, it will take him more seconds to get to the ball. Since the amount of time it takes to get to the ball changes depending on how much the dog runs on the sand, there is a perfect spot in between that minimizes the amount of time to get to the ball. So that's basically an introduction to optimization. How to find the smallest amount of something, like time. However, the biggest amounts can also be very useful, especially when you're talking about money. Imagine you're starting to sell cookies in your neighborhood. If you want to make money, you need to figure out how much you should charge for your cookies. If you charge less for each cookie than you paid for it, you will actually lose money. The more you charge for your cookies, the more money you will make, but only up to a point. If your cookies are too expensive, you might not sell that much. If you sell your cookie for $1 million, no one will buy from you and you will not make any money. But how do you know where these biggest and smallest values are on a graph? Well, the biggest values look very similar to mountains. And how do you know when you've reached the top of a mountain? You know you've reached the top if before that point you were going up, and after that point you were going down. Mathematicians call this biggest value a maximum. The smallest values, on the other hand, look like valleys. And unlike the mountains, you know you've reached the bottom if before that point you were going down, and after that point you were going up. Mathematicians call this point a minimum. However, if we're going to find the values at these mountain tops and valleys, we have to study the inclination of a curve. So, let's talk about the slope. A slope is simply the inclination of a line. It tells you whether the line is going up or down, and how steep it is. Mathematicians realized that finding the slope of two points was very easy. If you simply walk from your starting point to your ending point, you can tell if you're going up or down. However, if mathematicians wanted to find the exact position of a maximum or minimum, they needed to figure out a way to find the inclination at one specific point. Notice that each point on the curve has its own slope. But how do we find this? If all you have is one point, then how do you know if the inclination is going like this, or like this, or like this? If there is no other point we can use to guide ourselves, we have no way of knowing what the inclination can look like. Well, the solution to this problem was very good, yet very simple. Since it seemed impossible to find the inclination of only one point, mathematicians decided to keep finding the inclination between two points instead. And their genius idea was the following. They called it the limit. Which is simply to make a point approach another one as closely as possible without actually touching it. With this in mind, let's see how the slope, or inclination, changes as the points get closer to each other. We can see that the inclination of two points that are very very close to each other is pretty much the same as the inclination of just one of those points and... Wait. We just did it! We discovered a way to find the inclination of one point using the idea of a limit. This discovery was very important, and mathematicians called it the derivative. In the most simplest of terms, the derivative is basically the slope at one specific point. The cool thing is, optimization is everywhere around you. For instance, did you know that the new design of the Volkswagen Beetle minimizes wind resistance? Or the fact that all soda cans look the same because that shape uses the least amount of material? Or even how the design of the tennis racket maximizes the sweet spot and minimizes vibrations? 